بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. So I want to do a three-part lecture or a three-part series to which will comprise of discussing the importance of the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the status of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين. and highlight some of the creed of the Shia sect, especially the Shia Ru'afidha and the 12 Imams, the Twelvers. First of all, I would like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessing of Islam and the greatness of the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, which is the best guidance. We ask Allah to guide us, forgive us, and grant us success, beneficial knowledge, understanding, and assist us in practicing in a manner that pleases him subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this series of lectures, I wish to discuss the importance of the sunnah, as I said, the status of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, and highlight some of the creed of the Shia sect, which contradicts the orthodox understanding of Islam as it was revealed by Allah the Almighty, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and practiced and understood by the pious predecessors. I seek refuge in Allah and depend upon Him and ask for His guidance in this matter and ask that He guide and assist the Muslims everywhere with the correct understanding and practice of His religion, subhanahu wa ta'ala, as this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His religion. Imam Babahari, a 4th century scholar known for his knowledge and piety, he said, know that Islam is the Sunnah and the Sunnah is Islam. And that one is not independent of the other. This statement illustrates how the early scholars uh, viewed the concept of the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ as including everything in Islam from revelation to all the actions, statements, and practices of the Prophet. ﷺ. In addition, Islam and the Sunnah, Islam and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ are one and inseparable. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا أَتَاكَمْ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَاهَكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْعِقَابِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And whatsoever the messenger giveth you, take it. And whatsoever he forbidden, abstain from it. And keep your duty to Allah. Lo, Allah is stern in reprisal. So, whatever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with, we accept it. And whatever he said to abstain from, we refrain from it. Allah the Almighty says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهُ فَاعْتَبِعُونِ يُحْبِبَكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبُكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غُفُرُ رَحِيمُ قُلْ اَتْعِيُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولُهُ فَإِن تُوَلُّوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْكَافِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, Say, O Muhammad, to mankind, if ye love Allah, follow me. Allah will love you and forgive you of your sins. Allah is all forgiving, merciful. Say, obey Allah and the Messenger. But if they turn away, lo, Allah loveth not the disbelievers. And this is in Surah Al Ali, uh, Ali Imran. Allah the Almighty also says, Ya yuladina amanu atiyullaha wa atiyu rasula, wala tawallu anhu wa antum tasma'oon. وَلَا تَكُونُ كَالَّذِينَ قَالُوا سَمَعْنَا وَهُمْ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ إِنَّ الشَّرَ الدَّوَّابِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ يَصُمٌ بُكْمٌ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala says in, uh, in this verse, He says, O you who believe, obey Allah and His Messenger, and turn not away from Him when you hear Him speak. Be not as those who say, We hear, and they hear not. Lo, the worst of beasts in, the, in Allah's sight are the deaf, the dumb, who have no sense. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described those people who do not obey Allah and do not obey His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and who, who, are, uh, who are ignorant and remain ignorant even when you're spoken to them. They have no sense. Allah described them as beasts. Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala also mentions, Ya yuladina amanu, astajibu lillahi wa lirusuli idha da'akum lima yuhikum. O ye who believe, obey Allah and His Messenger when He calleth you to that which uh, hastens you. The Quran, which is the perfect speech of Allah, 
is filled with verses ordering the believers to follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commandments and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah's religion is perfect and complete. And the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, his sunnah is straight and the best guidance. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says, الْيَوْمَ أَتْمَلْتَ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَلْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَدَيْتَ لَكُمْ إِسْلَامَ دِينَ This day I have perfected for you your religion and completed my favor upon you and chosen Islam for you as your religion. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu states, Allah informed his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the believers that he has completed iman for them and that they will never require an increase and the law has perfected it and it will never be decreased and he is pleased with it and it will never be dissatisfied with it. The scholars clarify that when iman is mentioned alone in the Quran and in the Sunnah, then it includes both the meaning of Islam and Iman. And when they are mentioned together in the same text, meaning Islam and Iman, they take on their separate meanings. So in the statement of Ibn Abbas, ta'ala the perfection and completeness of Iman is a reference to Islam. The Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that of his companions ta'ala clarifies for us what is good, the straight path, the way to attain paradise, and their sunnah exposes religious heresy, bid'ah, misguidance, and deviation, which all lead to the hellfire. As is illustrated in the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam statement, where he said, "Usikum bi taqwallah, wa usikum bi taqwallah, wa sami wa ta, wa in abdin habashin, fa inna kum man yaish min kum fa siyara ikhtilaf kathira, fa alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati khulafa rashidin al mahdiin." In this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, he said, I advise you, I advise you to fear Allah and listen and obey to the leader, even if he were an Ethiopian slave. For whosoever amongst you lives after me shall see many differences. Therefore it is upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided uh, Khalifa Hold on to it and bite down upon it with your molar teeth, and beware of newly invented matters. For every invented matter, uh, for every innovated matter, is bid'ah, and every bid'ah is misguidance. And bid'ah here, we're talking about bid'ah linguistically, which means bid'ah, uh, 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 bid'ah here is not the bid'ah linguistically. Actually, bid'ah here is talking about bid'ah in the religion. So bid'ah linguistically would mean like newly invented matters, for example, the camera, the television, the laptop, the cell phone. These things are newly invented matters that were not during the time of the Prophet wasallam, and they're not haram just for being new or being new technology. But in fact, when uh, uh, something newly invented becomes haram, it has to do with the religion, meaning there is no new salat in Islam. There's new, no new way to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no new form of ibadah and worship. And we don't take and lessen the amount of worship, nor do we increase it. But we stay with what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam guided us with. Narrated Ibn uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said, The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam drew a line in the dirt and then said, This is the path of Allah. Then he drew a line on the right and then on the left of it. And then he said, These are the various paths. And on every path there is a shaitan that calls to it. Then he salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi recited, When the hath is sarati mustaqimin fa'atabiyu wa la ta'atabiyu subul. Fa'atafarakum bikum an sabilihi, thalikum wasakum bihi, la'alakum tatakum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse and that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited, he said, this is my straight path, so follow it. Follow not other, uh, other ways, lest ye be parted from his path. This hath he uh, ordained for you, that ye may ward off evil. Among the many, many benefits we attain from these hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that the community would experience differences, splits in sectarianism which are not positive attributes, but nevertheless would occur. Also that the prescription is following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnat al rashidin So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered us as a prescription for this illness of splitting into groups and sects and jama'at and calling to this this uh, head of uh, of a group and calling to this being khawarij, mu'tazila, uh, uh, shi'i, uh, 
all these other various groups, Jamaat uh, Tabliq, Jamaat al Ikhwan al Muslimin, and sur the Sururis, and uh, this one and this one. What the Prophet gave us as a prescription is to leave the bid'ah by following the Sunnah, his Sunnah, Salawatu Rabbi wa Salamu Alayhi, and the Sunnah of his companions, Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu Majma'in. In addition, we learn that all innovation in religious matters is misguidance and leads to the hellfire, and that there will be many devils calling to their his, their group, their jama'ah, and their various creeds and methodologies for interpreting Islam, which contradict the divine guidance of pristine creed as revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and espoused by his messenger Muhammad salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said the Jews would break into 71 sects and the Christians into 72 sects and my nation would break into 73 sects all of them in the fire they asked who are they uh, messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are today so in this hadith the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam let us know that we would break into groups and sects he salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi said, If tarakat al yahud ala ita wa sabayin firqa, wa sa taftarik wa iftarak al nasara ala ithnatayin wa sabayin firqa, wa sa taftarik wa havihi umma ala talatha wa sabayin firqa, kulla hafi nara la waida. So the Prophet sallallahu made clear for us that we would break, we would follow the way of the people from before us. As the Prophet sallallahu said in another authentic hadith, he said, let تعتبرون السنة من كان قبلكم حذو القذة من قذة حتى لو دخلوا الجهر ذا لدخلتموه The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said you would follow the people who came before you uh, handspan by handspan uh, even if they followed into the even if they entered the hole of a lizard a bub you would follow follow with them and then the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam رضي الله تعالى عنه مجمعين asked who are they ya Rasulullah Men whom Ya Rasul, Al Yahud wa Nasara, the companions, Rabbi Allah Ta'ala Anhum, asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, are they the Jews and the Christians? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam responded by saying, for men. Who else? Who else? Meaning we would follow them in everything. We would follow them even in shirk and committing uh, deviant practices which go against Islam, which violate the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what would happen to the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what continues to happen is that we have some from uh, amongst our community, amongst our nation of Muslims that worship the graves. Some worship their imams as we will see in the next uh, series of lectures when we talk about the Rafidah. That they actually believe their imams are infallible. Their imams are perfect and make no mistakes and know the unseen and we'll have the evidence for you from their text we'll bring the evidence from where from their text not from me not from sunni sources not from ahlu sunnah not from the salaf asare but we'll bring it from their text the rafida from their very mouths and their very text in their books their most famous books like al kafi and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And we'll end by this statement of Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. May Allah have, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with uh, Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu and his son Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said, whoever seeks to practice the sunnah, then adhere, adhere to the sunnah of those who have died meaning those who have proceeded. Those are the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were the best of this nation, contained the most pious heart, the deepest knowledge, and were the least tiresome in practicing their obligations. They were a people who Allah chose his companions to his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and convey his religion. Therefore, follow their mannerisms, their ways, for they were the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who were on the correct path. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and bless us to be on the correct path, to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and meet him salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi along with all the other Prophets alayhim after salatu wa salam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be in the companionship of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in and jinnah to fardos wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya na Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.